Hey film friends, I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Welcome to the channel. What do you get when you take an aging starlet whose 90s movie run is a little too perfect for this role and shoot her up with a neon goo? Which may or may not be, you know, Botox, fillers, Ozempic. And then stick her in a Freaky Friday picture of Dorian Gray, Cronenberg's The Fly Stew, a female body obsession where all hell breaks loose. Extreme body horror meets biting satire. Remember, you are one. This is Coralie Farja's The Substance. Look, the themes of this movie are fairly basic and unsophisticated. Farja's film is a headlong, full-on takedown of absurd beauty standards in society at large, and in particular, in Tinseltown. It's about aging in Hollywood and the pressures applied to women by the media. Pretty girls should always smile. Ruthless body standards, female self-hatred, the temptation and demand to remain eternally young. But I think what is more interesting here is the inner war going on. Demi Moore's Elizabeth Sparkle needs her better half Sue in order to, as she says at one point, know that I still matter. Later on, she's offered the chance to stop the whole substance experiment and can't. I need you because I hate myself, she says then. You're the only lovable part of me. See, the substance captures well the terror of aging, but it does so by taking this internal battle and concretizing it externally through an incredibly visually stylish film. The comparisons between the two women are stark, even as there is a symbiosis between them. The younger Sue is the picture of puerile hedonism, youth wasted on the young, while Elizabeth is growing more insecure and reclusive by the day. This is the push and pull at the center of Farja's picture. But honestly, the thing that really, really, yeah, I meant to say it twice, makes this picture interesting to me isn't any of that. It's to me more. Her casting is so freaking inspired, it blows my mind. First of all, at 61, this performance is outrageously good. I can't remember a female role this bold and naked and visceral, where she puts it all on the line and freaks out and uglifies herself to the nth degree. This one deserves three stars for her performance alone. The birthing sequence in this film is unreal. It's among the best of this entire year, and this is outdone by Demi's meltdown in front of the mirror later on. But let's really think about the meta aspects here for a second. I think it's fitting to have more here the same year the documentary about the Brat Pack came out. I can never imagine the woman from About Last Night and St. Elmo's Fire taking a role this risky. It's more than that though. Consider Demi Moore's projects in say the 90s. Strip tease, selling your body to men. Indecent proposal, quite literally a sex object for sale. G.I. Jane, the strength of your body. Disclosure, sexuality as a weapon. On and on it goes. Placing her in this spot, a woman who herself capitalized on her raw sex appeal for so long, offers a brutal commentary on all this stuff. And her her decision to join the fracas. How do you pronounce the word fracas? Fracas. Is that what I said? Okay. Shows a pretty incredible capacity for self-reflection. But it's the way that the director chooses to capture all of this that makes it so unique. There is a fortitude and a force to Farja's visual design, which she's honed even more since her excellent debut, Revenge. This gets paired with the pounding insanity in the sound design, which is really destabilizing. The film is simultaneously filled with all these really symmetrical wide-shot compositions of carpeted hallways and white bathrooms that look like something from The Shining. All of these contain this quiet ambiance, almost clinical precision. This gives way to highly stylized, hyper-cutting and pulsing distorted sound, close-ups of the process of injection that resemble Arnofsky's Requiem for a Dream, fish-eyed lenses and ultraviolet sets and insert shots galore. It's like every shot was put there for a reason, to elicit a reaction in the audience. Then they're just edited together frenetically until they practically give us a headache. It's a film that somehow manages to recall Cronenberg's The Fly, Lynch's Elephant Man, Henenlotter's Brain damage and the cultural commentary of Paul Verhoeven. But for the shots themselves, Farja said it best herself. She was going for Park Chan-wook. If you're looking for any other positives, look, I think the body horror works here. It's an extreme, unrestrained, disgusting version of it, to be sure. But in a final 30 minutes, which gleefully goes balls to the wall and it's gritty bloodletting, Farja more than delivers on the gore. To me, the takeaway is this. 
You always knew this was all crazy hard for women. But here's a visceral, horrific depiction which collapses into absurdity to show you just how difficult it all can be. You know, what I might have with the substance is a failure to meet high expectations. I heard all the buzz of this coming out of Khan, its competition for the Palme d'Or, it winning for Farshad's screenplay. And then I watched friends and film lovers either absolutely love it or kind of inexplicably hate it. Have you ever seen so many four and a half and one and a half star ratings in your life? But after all that, I'm sort of sad to say, I find myself kind of disappointedly right in the middle. The craft, all the shots and sound design, the claustrophobia and bodily disfigurement created through impressive visual effects, the sheer boldness of Demi Moore's performance, Quali's own strong turn, this stuff is pretty undeniable. But what is also equally incontrovertible? Look that one up. To me, is that this film has just about one idea. One. 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 And it spends two hours and 15 minutes bludging us over the head with it, with no sign of a single bloody drop of subtlety in sight. The substance lacks any modicum of nuance. It's gross and loud with a maximalist visual style, and an idea that I'm sad to say is not even remotely new. Now, if you're the person who loves this movie, then you're defending this tooth and nail. It had to be this way. She's driving her point home. This is satire, Furman. The men must be buffoonish caricatures. Okay, but for me, somewhere along the way, I just wanted a little more thematic development. And in the absence of that, the sheer style of this over substance. Style? Substance? It's the title of the movie. <laughs> I didn't even know it. You get it. Honestly, it started to kind of irk me. Somewhere around the 500th shot of Quali's chest in Buck, I was, Buck, <laughs> wow, pause. But, not Buck. So stupid. Somewhere along the 500th shot of Quali's chest and butt, I was like, we get it. And because the themes here are not novel, I think the film is pregnant with all sorts of ideas left unexplored that would have been really interesting to me. The substance's avid defenders want to claim that this whole runtime is this slow burn build towards dark hilarity, that we're hammering this one idea home in order to make a point which is emphatic and worthy of a megaphone. So the final 20 minutes is seen as a catharsis of this single note build. Fine. I'm also well aware that body horror is generally not the genre to go all deep and complex. And yet, let's check the tape. David Cronenberg managed to craft about six of his own extremely rich fantasies slash nightmares in barely over 100 minutes. So for me, I'm just not sure I needed 130 for you to deliver the rather tepid truth that beauty standards are ridiculous in Hollywood in society and that aging for women is a damn near impossible enterprise. So, what do we conclude? The substance is a satire that gleefully shoves society's obsession with beauty down its audience's throat. A vehicle for a near all-time best to me more in a truly fearless performance, and another addition to the growing canon of stellar Margaret Qualley work. This is a film that makes a statement, brash, loud, ham-fisted, and relentless. The cinematography is captivating, and the themes, while not groundbreaking, are visually stunning. But with a single idea played on repeat for over two hours, it may leave you feeling pulverized rather than enlightened. Well, there you have it. The only thing left to discuss is our rating for this picture. FOF gives the substance 3.5 out of 5 stars. If you enjoyed this review, please let us know by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Also, don't forget to visit FermanOnFilm.com for even more movie content. And we've got a podcast, guys. Check out the Furman on Film podcast on Apple Pods or at Spotify whenever you get the chance. New episodes coming this week. Thanks for watching. I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Stay firm, my friends.